Hello, and thank you for joining us for the Pharmacy Cannabis Lecture Series. Each session is designed to deliver a small dose of cannabis education. My name is Candace Haas, and I want to thank all of our viewers from the pharmacy, from the pottery, and from Bud and Bloom for joining us. Today, we're going to discuss cannabidiol, also known as CBD. Cannabidiol has become one of the most popular cannabinoids due to its wide availability, anti-inflammatory effects, and non-psychoactive properties. Failing to understand the varieties, the ratios, and dosing may lead to unsuccessful results and not receiving the full benefits of CBD. And that's one of the reasons why we decided to discuss it at the webinar today. Our special guest speaker is Dr. Matt Elms, Director of Product Development at Canacraft, one of the largest cannabis product manufacturers in the world for a discussion on can cannabinoid cannabinoids. Dr. Elms will discuss the biochemical pathways in our body, the entourage effect, the difference, differences between isolate, broad spectrum and full spectrum products, proper dosing, ratio products, and how to get the best outcome. Now a little bit about our speaker. Dr. Elms holds a PhD in molecular and cellular biology from Stony Brook University in New York, where he focused on the endocannabinoid and phytocannabinoid cellular transport mechanisms for his dissertation work. By the end of his graduate education, he had authored over a dozen peer-reviewed scientific journals about can cannabinoids it was named co-inventor and granted a patent application. In 2018, Dr. Elms began his postdoctoral work, doctoral work with Artello Bioscience, developing a novel class of endocannabinoid transport inhibitors. The compounds that he and his team developed are able to modulate endocannabinoid system signaling and hold great promise in non-addictive, anti-inflammatory and pain-killing drugs. He has recently transitioned into an industry position with Canacraft where he focuses on cannabinoid formulations and to product development for the Canacraft brands, which include Satori, Care by Design, and Absolute Extracts, just to name a few. I'm happy to have Dr. Elms with us, and I'm going to begin with a short video. Hey, everyone. I'm Dr. Matt Elms, Director of New Product Development here at Canacraft. Welcome to headquarters. Let me show you around. Canacraft was founded in 2014 around a patient-focused brand, Care by Design. Since then, we've expanded to multiple other brands like Absolute Extracts, our edible line, Satori Chocolates, and Hi-Fi Hops. Let's go check out the bottling line. So here's where the magic happens. Here's the bottling room where we make all our Hi-Fi beverages and keep sodas. Uh, each of these guys right here holds 1,000 gallons of beverage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand gallons of beverages we hold at one time. Here's our new state-of-the-art system. This thing has huge throughput, making uh, thousands of bottles an hour. As a vertically integrated company, we source cannabis plant matter from all over the state and then extract the oil from that cannabis right here in our lab. That oil ends up in all of our products, whether it be soft gels, droppers, edibles, or your vapes. We do it all right here in the facility. So here's our extraction room, where we have 25 super critical CO2 extractors running almost 24 seven to provide all the cannabis oil in our products. Let's check in with one of our co-founders. He's gonna tell you more. Yeah, so uh, these are our super critical CO2 extractors. Um, we've, we've just started a new process with uh, these extractors. We reconfigured them and we're able to do uh, really sub sub uh, zero extractions with uh, CO2 right now, uh, meaning that we take the temperature all the way down to minus 30 and then extract the terpenes and cannabinoids at really low temperatures. And so it's really preserving the terpenes. It's, you might even think of it really close to like a live resin uh, that you would get with uh, hydrocarbon extraction. All right, here we are in the fusion lab. As you can see, uh, doing a lot of different things with the chocolates over here for Satori. Over here, we're doing soft gels for Care by Design. Uh, we're doing sublingual drops over in the corner. Uh, and then we're starting to formulate some of the products over here on this side. Over here, we got the VTA. We're making distillate. Um, you can see the oil's coming down on the inside of the glass. We're separating it. The THC is going to this side. Some of the waste product is going this way, it's chlorophyll and waxes. All right, thanks, Dennis. Thanks for checking out a little bit of what we do here at Canacraft. It's obviously way too much to see for a virtual tour, so you'll have to come out sometime to get the full experience.
Did you enjoy the video, everybody? <laughs> Were you able to see it on your side, Matt? I saw it. Uh, okay, a little choppy, but uh, I saw it. All right, awesome. Just making sure we didn't have any technical Zoom issues. Yep. Um, so yeah, that was a great little tour of the facility. So I'm really excited that we got to show that first. And please take it away and let's uh, educate the audience on the intricacies of CBD. Sure, let me figure out how to share screen here. Uh, uh, you know, the button I used to share a screen disappeared. Uh, it worked before we started here. Uh, uh, Sometimes it, Zoom has issues, so no worries. Yeah. Um, can I try stopping this share and then, are you, has the share screen button come back up yet? No, it's... Actually, block maybe, right now. Maybe push Weirdly. the escape button. Let's see, start share, let's try this. All right, let me try something. There we go. All right, perfect. All right. Okay, do you see my screen, Candace? Yeah, we see the okay. screen. So just. All right, well, uh, thank you for the great introduction. Uh, I wanna switch it to here. slideshow just real quick though. Uh huh. Great. Take it away, doctor. Thank you so much. Sure. All right. So once again, thank you for the invitation to be here. I'm really happy to be talking to you all today. Um, so we have a lot to talk about. I was, you know, looking at this when I was putting my slides together the other day, um, and I have a lot of ground to cover. I'm shooting for uh, maybe a 30 to 40 minute talk. Um, I start with, um, you know, a little back background about myself. You know, uh, what are cannabinoids? I'm going to tell you about the different types of cannabinoids, um, and how they tie into our endocannabinoid system. Uh, I was asked to talk a little bit about the biochemical pathways that THC and CBD work by inside our bodies. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what we know about entourage effects, uh, the difference between uh, the, the spectrums of cannabis, uh, what's an isolate versus a broad spectrum versus a full spectrum product. Uh, and we'll finally top off with uh, a little talk about dosing and ratio considerations and uh, what formulations uh, and how they affect uh, the making the best product possible. So Candice already did a really nice introduction. Um, I did a PhD in molecular and cellular biology in Stony Brook University. Uh, my focus was on the molecular transport mechanisms of, by which THC and CBD and our endocannabinoids get transported around inside our body. Uh, I shifted from there into a postdoctoral position in pharmaceuticals uh, with a company called Artello Biosciences. Uh, my main focus there was developing drugs that are able to raise our endocannabinoid levels in our brain. Uh, this actually results in really powerful anti pain and anti inflammatory effects. And we see this as a really promising way to combat the opioid epidemic, which is really a, a scary thing going on in our country right now. Uh, so that is uh, that project is still going on. I'm no longer with Artel Biosciences because I moved to the California cannabis industry. Uh, last year in July, I, I moved to Santa Rosa uh, to join uh, Canacraft, where I currently work as the Director of Scientific Affairs. So a little bit about my company. Uh, Canacraft is a vertically integrated cannabis product manufacturer. So what do I mean by vertically integrated? Uh, that means we essentially go from seed to sale almost. Uh, you know, we grow cannabis, we have a few farms, uh, we take that cannabis and we extract the oil from it. We'll clean up that oil in our lab. Uh, we formulate that oil into products and we, we make those products ourselves, we package the products ourselves. Uh, we do all our own marketing, we do all our own distribution. So we're really uh, sort of, from the <laughs> growing the plant till it goes out the door into your hands. Like we do e pretty much every step of the way. Uh, the company, we're one of the old time players in the, the California cannabis industry. We were founded in 2014 uh, during the early days of medical marijuana. Our headquarters is based in Santa Rosa. Um, that's where that video you just saw was taken and that's where I'm sitting right now. Uh, Canacraft employs about 250 people uh, making us one of the largest employers in Sonoma County. I think we're in the top 10 or something like that. Uh, you know, we manufacture hundreds of different products, all kinds of form factors, uh, soft gels, the tinctures, the beverages, the vapes, you, know, you name it, we probably make it. Uh, our products are found in the, the vast majority of dispensaries throughout the, the state. 
Um, and we recently launched in Colorado as well. Uh, so we offer a lot of brands. Our big ones I've listed down here. Uh, Absolute Extracts is our sort of more recreational focused high THC product brand. Uh, Care by Design is one most relevant to this talk. That's really our CBD rich products and wellness based products. Uh, so we'll be talking a lot about Care by Design today. Uh, we have Farmer of the Felon, which is our flower brand, pre-rolls. Um, uh, in a partnership with La Canitas, we have the best-selling cannabis beverage in California uh, called Hi-Fi Hops. Uh, we also make some beverages under the, the Keep line, uh, some sodas and some high-concentration mocktail-type beverages. Uh, then we have Loud and Clear, which is a high-potency live resin vape cards. And finally, Satori, um, which is our, our chocolates and mints, and uh, you really have to try it. We have a, a culinary chef that uh, focuses on making these products, and they really are just uh, delicious. <clears throat> so care by design is what I want to hone in on, because it, it's uh, our speedy, um, rich product brand. Uh, it was our fir very first brand we made. Um, it's kind of the flagship brand of the company. Um, you know, the CBD to THC ratio approach, um, you'll see all our products are a ratio of CBD content to THC content. Um, we're the first ones to do that, uh, as far as I'm aware, and you'll see other brands kind of doing that now too, uh, like Papa and Barkley and some others. Um, that's because it makes a lot of sense. And during the talk, I'm going to kind of keep circling back to why it makes sense and why this ratio approach is, in my mind, the best way to go and the best way to dose T uh, THC and CBD. Um, and we also have a brand new uh, hemp company. So uh, as of a few months ago, our CBD products are now available nationwide. So start off, so what are cannabinoids? Uh, cannabinoids are really broken down into three broad categories. Uh, the ones you're most familiar with are probably the phytocannabinoids. Uh, these are simply cannabinoids that are derived from plants. Uh, namely the cannabinoid because it's the only one we know of that makes cannabinoids. Uh, there have been over a hundred cannabinoids that have been described in the cannabis plant. Now what um, THC in cannabis is mimicking are something called endocannabinoids. These are natural compounds that our body is making all the time. Uh, they, they hit our cannabinoid receptors, and when we take THC, our body sort of thinks we're having this, uh, a lot of these endocannabinoids around. I'm gonna go a little bit into those too during the talk. Uh, finally, there are synthetic cannabinoids. Uh, synthetic cannabinoids can mean a couple of different things, really. Uh, so the first one you might know, uh, you might remember 10 years ago, things started coming around called like K2 and Spice. Uh, these were synthetic cannabinoids that are actually uh, found to be quite dangerous. Um, they very, very strongly activate our cannabinoid receptors, um, but they are, um, you know, now that we have some legalization that are really not necessary and we don't see them around California too much. Uh, but synthetic cannabinoids could also mean, uh, you know, phytocannabinoids that were made in a test tube or are basically brewed in yeast. So we can do things now like taking the enzymes from the plant, put it into a yeast and make that yeast actually create THC or CBD or any cannabinoid we want. Uh, these are technologies are sort of emerging um, and I think they're really fascinating. <clears throat> so CBD and THC are the two most highly expressed cannabinoids of the cannabis plant. Um, they're the two we're most familiar with because we know the most about them and they actually have these really fascinating uh, processes that they work by in our body. Uh, interestingly, THC and CBD are almost identical chemically. There's a single bond, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse, um, that differs. There's literally a, a closed ring here versus an open ring here. Um, but they have vastly different pharmacological effects in our body, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, THC is really what's responsible for the feeling of being stoned or high. THC cannabinoid receptors, and that is really what um, causes that high feeling. CBD is not intoxicating. So you can take all the CBD you want, but you will not feel that same sort of uh, stoned effect. Uh, of course, you might forget this living in California, um, but cannabis is still illegal federally. Uh, it may be late, uh, legal at the state level, to, uh, so one, to one degree or another, uh, but under federal jurisdictions, uh, it is still considered a Schedule One drug by the DEA. Uh, even CBD, which is not psychoactive, is still considered a Schedule One drug in most cases. Uh, the, the actual definition of a Schedule One drug 
is a drug with no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse, uh, which seems almost paradoxical considering the FDA has already approved four cannabinoid-based drugs. So we have CBD and THC in these sort of pharmaceutical preparations, um, but uh, the DEA still consider considers it being uh, no accepted medical use. Uh, I'm sure regulations will be updated over time. We know more about these compounds and uh, sort of the societal shift we've seen to our acceptance of cannabis and cannabinoids. Um, uh, as of 2018, there was a farm bill, uh, which does make an exception for CBD that is derived from hemp. Uh, but there's still some gray areas in how CBD is being regulated federally. <clears throat> so many people might ask, what is the difference between hemp and marijuana or cannabis? Um, so you might be surprised to learn that these are actually the same species of plant. They're the cannabis, marijuana, hemp, they're all cannabis sativa, the same exact plant. The difference really is a legal one. Hemp is defined as cannabis that contains less than 0.3% THC by dry weight. So these just have very, very low um, THC content. Uh, but they still express a lot of CBD. Uh, marijuana, on the flip side, really only uh, is talking about cannabis that expresses greater than 0.3% THC, uh, often very high, um, up to maybe 30%. You'll see the, the market now. Um, the more THC you make in the plant, the less CBD and vice versa. So uh, there are, marijuana exists as sort of equal ratio of CBD and THC, uh, but a lot of what you see in the market today is these very high THC uh, chemovars, and then you'll see uh, on the other side, hemp, which is very high CBD, low THC. So, um, and there are some phenotypic differences between these plants. Uh, hemp tends to be more fibrous, is what we, that's why we make uh, clothing out of it and things like that. Uh, marijuana has really resinous, uh, bulbous flowers, and that's really where all the, the cannabinoids and terpenes are produced. So how do these plants tie into our bodies? Uh, the main thing we have to understand is the endocannabinoid system. So the endocannabinoid system consists of two receptors. They're known as CB1 and CB2 receptors, uh, endocannabinoids, and a bunch of different proteins that are involved with making endocannabinoids, transporting them around, or breaking them down. So the the endocannabinoid system is derived from the cannabis plant. However, the, uh, the endocannabinoid system actually predates the existence of the plant by hundreds of millions of years. Uh, we evolved the endocannabinoid system very early. So every vertebrate, vertebrate animal on the entire planet expresses a, an ACS. Uh, that means every single mammal, bird, fish, reptile, uh, we all have an ACS. It's a very uh, fundamental part of how we work. Uh, but fascinatingly, it was only discovered in the 1990s. So this is all really a, a very new field. Um, ECS mostly works in our brain and nervous system, but it has a variety of very important roles throughout our body. So uh, the, the main role of the endocannabinoid system is to act as our body's homeostatic regulator. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, homeostasis is basically means a return to baseline. So if a system is kind of dialed up too high or turned down too low, the, the ECS kind of functions to, to make things out. Uh, CB1 is what THC targets to make us feel high. Uh, CB1 is really found in our brain and our nervous system mostly, uh, but also in other tissues as well at lower levels. Uh, CB2 is, um, activation of CB2 will not make you feel high. Uh, there's only very, very low expression in our brain. Uh, CB2 is mostly expressed in the cells of our immune system and has really important roles in immunal regulation uh, and also in some GI function and regulating gastric motility. Uh, endocannabinoids are what TUC is mimicking. These are lipid-based neurotransmitters that our body makes. There's two major ones. Uh, we know of a few more, but by far, these are the two most prominent um, that our body uses. Uh, they're known as 2 arachidonoglycerol this is a mouthful, we usually call it 2-AG, and then there's arachidonoyl ethanolamide or anandamide. Um, TUC, most TUC most closely mimics the effects of this one right here. Uh, the how TUC and 2-AG work. Uh, interestingly, our bodies are making these all the time, 24-7. At the time you, I've been talking about the slide, your body made millions and millions of these compounds. Uh, they're very uh, inherent to how our kind of brain and nervous system works. 
So in a nutshell, either THC or endocannabinoids will interact with either CB1 or CB2. And they, that is how uh, ECS effects are produced. Uh, ECS affects many, many things. Um, our, our appetite regulation, our learning, mood, memory, stress levels, inflammation, um, this kind of regulation of pain and how we, how we perceive pain. Uh, I mean, that's, it's all a little hand wavy. It's usually the explanation you get. Uh, since I was asked to talk about biochemical pathways of these things, I wanted to give you sort of a little bit of an understanding of like mechanistically how this is working. Um, so the, the main role of CB1, uh, it is expressed on our neurons, um, specifically in presynaptic neurons. So if I feel a, a flick of my finger, uh, it starts a chemical reaction. One nerve talks to the next nerve, talks to the next nerve, and so on until it hits my, my spine, goes up to my brain and tells me, all right, I felt that flick. So what the endocannabinoid system does is it basically acts as a shutoff switch uh, when that signal has been received. So when an, a nerve cell gets an electrical signal, it releases neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft space. Um, these are two different neurons that are kind of talking right now. Um, that presynaptic cell, signals to the postsynaptic neuron, say, all right, uh, further on this chemical signal. But what happens is now when the postsynaptic neuron receives the signal, it actually stimulates the production of endocannabinoids, which then communicate in, uh, we call it a retrograde fashion, a, a backwards way. So it goes from the, the postsynapse to the presynapse. Uh, the endocannabinoids find CB1 on the presynaptic cell. You want to activate it, it says, all right, we received a signal, let's shut off. We don't need to release any more neurotransmitters. So that synaptic circuit is now returned to homeostasis. So that is what endocannabinoids have evolved to do in our nervous system. CB2 is, again, mostly found in our immune cells. Uh, its biggest role is in regulating inflammatory states in our body. You know, uh, inflammation is really important physiologically. Uh, it protects our bodies from cellular debris, uh, foreign invaders, pathogens, whatnot. Um, however, excess inflammation can be harmful or even fatal to an organism. Um, like with COVID these days, uh, you know, what's killing you is not necessarily COVID. It's generally the, the overactive inflammatory response produced by our bodies. Um, so the ECS has evolved as a sort of homeostatic safeguard against our own immune system. Uh, when, you know, there's too much inflammation, endocannabinoids are produced and it signals those immune cells to kind of lower it lower those levels of the cytokines. So uh, activation of CB2 uh, results in uh, reduction of pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-6, IFN gamma, and uh, TNF-alpha, uh, but also produces more anti-inflammatory uh, cytokines like interleukin-10. Uh, it's important to know that CBD works very, very differently than THC does. CBD is not binding directly to your cannabinoid receptors. It's THC is activating them, not CBD. Uh, a lot of people get that confused. Um, this is the exact reason that consuming all the CBD you want will not make you feel high. Uh, you need that CB1 activation to, to feel that stoned effect. Now, CBT is known as a pleiotropic molecule, which means that it hits a lot of different targets inside our body. Um, some of the effects of CBD actually overlap with THC and others are completely different, which is really interesting to me. Uh, for instance, THC and CBD are both anti-inflammatory, they both have anti-convulsant properties, uh, they both reduce pain perception. Now, uh, uh, THC, for the differences, you know, so you stark contrast, uh, THC generally promotes anxiety, whereas CBD generally alleviates anxiety. Uh, THC is psychotropic, while CBD is not. Um, we rapidly develop tolerance to THC if you, you know, take it daily, while uh, so far we don't think CBD develops uh, a tolerance. So how does CBD work? Um, we're still figuring it out in a lot of ways, uh, but what we do know so far is that CBD activates uh, certain types of serotonin receptors. Uh, it activates certain types of ion channels, specifically is TRPV1. Uh, also, these nuclear um, uh, receptors called uh, PPARs or PPAR gamma. Uh, at the same time, CBD blocks activation of other receptors, uh, such as these two found in our brain, known as GPR55 and 18, and other, another type of ion channels called TRPM8. Uh, CBD also indirectly influences how our endocannabinoid system is 
Uh, CBD has been shown to alter the way the THC is able to fit inside the CB1 receptor. Uh, CBD is known as a negative allosteric modulator of CB1. Uh, CBD affects, in a way, how much CB1 is actually available at the cell surface for THC to even interact with. Um, CBD also inhibits degradation of anandamide, uh, which likely causes higher kind of endogenous endocannabinoid signaling constantly. Uh, so clinically, what do we actually know about cannabinoid effects? Most of what we know is anecdotal. We, we, you know, most of us here have probably experienced THC. We talk to people that have. Uh, we sort of know what it feels like, um, but you know, it's hard to substantiate what you actually know. Uh, we know a lot less than we should for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, cannabinoid science is a relatively new field. Uh, there's also a lot of technical challenges in studying these kind of lipid-based systems like the endocannabinoid system. Uh, and cannabis and it's really super challenging to conduct high quality research. Uh, I know this, I used to work in a lab. I, uh, you know, we had a DEA license to carry THC. Um, to carry literally two milligrams, enough to get a bunch of mice stoned, you would not believe the, the regulatory hurdles we had to go through. You know, biannual state inspections, federal inspections, we had to get three levels of locking doors, I had to have a video camera on this thing, on this little, this refrigerator that had literally two or three milligrams of THC in it, a fraction of a dose here. Um, it, it's absolutely insane. We had to do everything short of training a guard dog. Um, so those are real challenges that we have to go through to actually study cannabinoids. And believe me, it gets only more challenging when you want to do clinical research in a human. Uh, while we don't know as much as we should by now, we do know a lot. Uh, there have been thousands of you know, animal model or in vitro papers uh, published. Uh, hundreds of clinical studies have been published about what's going on. So in clinical research, you know, all differences in what's happening in a, a rodent versus what's happening in a human. So we, you know, we really need that uh, high quality clinical research to know for sure what effects these things are having uh, in a therapeutic sense. Uh, and randomized placebo controlled clinical trials are really the gold standard. So if we're solely talking about that, uh, what randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled clinical trials in humans have demonstrated. Uh, this is what we, everything else is really anecdotal right now. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not true. It just means we don't have the evidence to know for sure that these are properties that are really um, CBD and THC have. So CBD uh, is known to be an anticonvulsant. Uh, the most recent FDA-approved uh, cannabinoid drug is Epidiolex, which is an FDA-approved uh, CBD. Uh, that treats certain types of intractable childhood epilepsies. Uh, CBD is known to uh, alleviate anxiety, uh, is an anti-inflammatory agent. Uh, it blocks pain, uh, certain types of pain. It's been shown for fibromyalgia. Um, CBD also blocks some negative effects of THC. Uh, you'll notice for THC, we have a blue box and a red box because some of the effects that we know about THC are generally considered a negative. So THC does have uh, very strong anti-pain properties. It's an anti-inflammatory agent. It stimulates uh, appetite. It's anti-emetic, which means it strongly reduces nausea and vomiting. And it's also known to reduce muscle spasticity with the caveat that all this work was really shown in multiple sclerosis. Um, uh, there's more work needed to extrapolate those findings to other conditions. Um, we do know also though that THC causes short-term memory impairments, uh, specifically a type of memory called verbal memory recall. Uh, THC also induces anxiety at higher doses. Uh, we believe a lower doses actually tends to not increase anxiety or actually reduce it. Uh, but once you get to higher doses, uh, it definitely causes some anxiogenesis. Um, now, what's really interesting is that when THC was with CBD in a lot of these studies, um, we, show, we see that these effects are mitigated. So the people still feel high, um, they still enjoy their experience of THC, um, but those verbal memory recalls are less severe. Uh, the, it actually totally blocked the anxiety that was induced by THC. So um, this is a big part of why I think THC and CBD really synergize very well. You should be um, looking for products that actually have both of these compounds. All right, so what do we know about entourage effects? This is probably a term a lot of you have heard. Um, so CBD and THC are anecdotally reported to work uh, better uh, when they're from whole plant preparations, meaning they have all the, the, the stuff that was in that cannabis plant. 
uh, present. Uh, so the on-rod is a term often associated with cannabis, describing how uh, various parts of the plant can work together to produce different effects. Uh, so CBD and TEC synergizing could be considered one aspect of the entourage. Uh, this is the one that we really have some validation that's really going on. Um, on right effects are often referring to effects by minor cannabinoids or interplay with non-cannabinoid components of the plants. Uh, usually we're talking about terpenes in that case. Um, these have a little bit less substantiation in the research, but the anecdotal support for them is pretty wide and, you know, um, we, we just need some more research to really uh, hone in on how this stuff is working and what's going on. So what are the desirables in the cannabis plant? So when we extract cannabis oil, um, we're trying to get all the good stuff and leave behind all the stuff that we don't want. Uh, so the good stuff is generally, we're talking about cannabinoids, terpenes, and flavonoids. Uh, so cannabinoids are the major cannabinoids, of course, THC and CBD. We're also talking about minor cannabinoids. Uh, there's a slew of these, like I said, we know about more than hundred cannabinoids at this point. Uh, I heard acidic cannabinoids are a separate category. Uh, that's because the plant actually only makes acidic cannabinoids. When you heat up THCA, it'll turn into THC. Uh, and THCA is not psychoactive. This is the exact reason you need to uh, either smoke your weed or bake it. You can't just eat a cannabis flower and feel high uh, because you're just taking it at THCA, which is not going to hit your cannabinoid receptors the same way. Um, so all these other minor cannabinoids and major cannabinoids uh, come from an acidic cannabinoid precursor. Now, uh, terpenes are the compounds that are responsible for the aroma of cannabis and a lot of plants in, uh, in the plant world. Um, cannabis happens to be particularly abundant in terpenes, uh, both in variety of them and in the amount of them. Um, something like up to 5% of the flower is made up of terpenes. Uh, cannabis makes uh, exactly two types of terpenes. Um, not too important to go into but just that monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes are the two types. Uh, for instance, monoterpenes are things like uh, beta myrcene, limonene, um, or we're an example of sesquiterpenes like beta caryophyllin. Uh, and now, flavonoids are a classic compound we know a little bit less about, um, but they provide plants with pigments and flavor and tend to enhance the experience. So, cannabis products are on a spectrum. So, you have probably heard about the differences, you know, isolate. From, uh, it goes from a range of full spectrum to isolate. So isolate is basically just one single cannabinoid compound with nothing else present. Uh, although in reality, outside of pharmaceutical preparations, you don't get real uh, true purity. Uh, generally anything over 96% CBD is usually considered a CBD isolate. Now broad spectrum has all the cannabinoids, but the THC is removed. Um, so that might be an attractive thing for someone that might take a drug test or something like that, but still want some of those minor cannabinoids. Um, now, it has uh, all the cannabinoids that are present in the plant, but essentially nothing else. Uh, and now full spectrum is the widest array of plant compounds uh, from the original plant matter, uh, usually referring to cannabinoids and terpenes. So the what spectrum your product is, is really determined by the type of extraction and the level of purification of that cannabis oil. So, you know, we will load uh, cannabis flower and trim into an extractor and we'll extract out a crude cannabis oil. Now, cannabis oil will have a lot of stuff in it, uh, mostly CBD and THC. Um, these are the most highly expressed uh, cannabinoids. However, it's going to have a slew of other minor cannabinoids. It'll have light terpenes, heavy terpenes, flavonoids. Um, so all the kind of pretty rainbow colors I made. Uh, the gross brownish colors I made is the stuff you don't want that comes out in some of those oils. Uh, things like chlorophyll and heavy plant waxes and the fats and lipids. Um, so what you do is you clean up that cannabis oil. So there's a variety of ways that cannabis oil is cleaned up. So for instance, winterization is a, a major one that's used. Uh, winterization is basically a process to remove heavy waxes. So we're able to actually remove the heavy waxes from this and now we have a more cleaned up cannabis oil. Um, now it's called a refined cannabis oil. So by refining it, we've actually increased the cannabinoid percentages, right? We had 30% TEC and going up to 40% TEC because we got rid of all that wax. 
Um, and you can keep purifying and purifying until you get to an actual pure fraction of just CBD. So um, again, we're on a spectrum. So a cannabis flower obviously is full spectrum because it actually contains every compound that it makes. Um, the, the more purification you do, the less full spectrum it gets. Uh, so the cat from the, the flower and trim will get a crude oil. Uh, crude oil almost looks like peanut butter. It's not a lot of people um, generally. So after a process, like I talked about winterization, we remove those heavy waxes, we get a refined cannabis oil. Uh, this can be further, further purified into a distillate. Uh, distillate basically is just getting the cannabinoids by themselves and getting rid of everything else that's not a cannabinoid. Uh, results in this really pretty uh, you know, amber oil. Um, and this is what the majority of vape cards are made out of, uh, this distillate. Now distillate, you can have a pure, further purification process to just get one single cannabinoid out of here. Um, and this is, you know, we're showing here CBD isolate. So, you know, these keep getting more and more pure until we have just one compound. <clears throat> just sort of going through some of the comparisons and the pros and cons between these. Um, it's not necessarily that one is right for everyone or one's necessarily better than the others. Um, they just have very different considerations. Um, you know, for example, if you're a person that might need to take a drug test, you probably don't want any um, So you might want to opt for an isolate based product. Uh, however, full spectrum products uh, tend to um, be reported by people to have more, um, more sophisticated effects. Um, you also get the, the full flavor and aroma of that original cannabis flower, uh, whereas uh, an isolate, one cannabinoid by themselves, has literally no taste or flavor. You can't taste anything. Um, and distillate somewhere in the middle with a little bit of flavor and aroma, but distillate is actually pretty bitter. Um, it's not really necessarily a pleasant taste. Uh, that pleasant taste is really coming from the terpenes and the flavonoids. Um, so again, uh, this goes from the spectrum of having more of the supporting plant co compounds and none of them. Uh, CBD is really easy to formulate with, whereas uh, full spectrum, you have some more considerations uh, when you're making a product out of it. Uh, CBD isolate is the, the most like a pharmaceutical preparation because in the pharmaceutical world, you really want single drug entities. Uh, you don't want this kind of a lot of pounds because you can't point what's doing what. Um, Whereas, uh, you know, full spectrum, every batch is going to be a little different because we're, whatever that plant made, which is going to depend on, uh, you know, the weather that season and how much sun it got. And um, that's going to affect the, the terpene profiles. And there'll be some differences to every batch when you're extracting. Um, it goes on a spectrum of, you know, not complex at all to very chemically complex. Um, there are more challenges or less challenges involved in making them. Um, and with the CBD isolate, at least, you have no engagement of endocannabinoid system signaling. Uh, broad spectrum, likewise, as there's no THC, will have little or no um, ACS engagement. Where the full spectrum cannabis will always have some THC, and you'll have some engagement of ECS uh, signaling. So um, at Care by Design, we really believe in full spectrum products. Um, everything we make will have uh, THC and um, even our hemp products have a tiny, tiny bit of CBD. We don't make anything with isolates uh, or broad spectrum oils that have the TUC removed. Uh, we really believe in that interplay of TUC and CBD together. Um, so even our vapes, you know, you wouldn't want to vape a crude oil. Uh, so most people in the industry are making distillate and filling their vape cards with distillate. Distillate has the highest concentration of TUC and cannabinoids. Um, so for us, so we don't want to put the crude oil in a vape, uh, but we do want to give full spectrum experience with our vapes. Uh, so what we do is actually we're able to separate out the cannabinoids and the terpenes and the flavonoids. And we clean up, you know, distillate is basically cleaned up cannabinoids. We do similar processes to clean up those terpenes. We got the terpenes, all the terpenes kind of isolated by themselves. And then we'll add those terpenes back into the distillate to make a full spectrum vape card. Uh, so we're you know, you lose a little bit of potency. You'll never see like a, a 95% the, uh, car, the terpenes, because we're diluting with terpenes. Um, but those terpenes really give our vapes uh, that really nice flavor and the uh, supporting effects. Uh, so I just want to give an example of uh, a 
challenge we have with the hemp side. So compared to marijuana and these high THC chemovars, uh, hemp is usually not a very good source of terpenes. It just doesn't produce as many and the types it produces are generally uh, more of like an earthy aroma than the very complex skunky aroma that uh, you get with marijuana. Uh, but we really wanted our hemp products to have these full spectrum effects. But we can't just go adding our marijuana derived terpenes into a hemp product because that would not be legal. Um, so we, we are sourcing terpenes from botanical sources, um, but we had this really interesting way of going about it. So what we did was teamed up with this Israeli research team um, that was assessing the Israeli medical cannabis program. So the way medical cannabis works in Israel is flower. There's no manufactured products or vapes or anything. Just you pick a strain or chemovar of flower, and that's what you use. Um, and the patients are free to choose whatever chemovar they want. They get a prescription for a month. Next month, they can go and change to a different chemovar if they want to. And they pick and choose. And usually after a couple months, they kind of find one that works for them and they enjoy and they stick with it. Um, so what this group did that we uh, partnered up with was they took hundreds and hundreds of patients. They looked at the chemovars that each of those patients selected and did this really complex analysis of terpene signatures in those chemovars. Um, and then they, when they had these huge data sets, they sorted by what that, what, what these people were actually prescribed the cannabis for. Um, so we use these data sets of terpenes and we mimic those terpene profiles from the Israeli medical Pre cannabis program uh, to, to develop and formulate the terpenes we add to our hemp CBD products. So it ultimately came uh, into five formulations. Uh, for instance, the, the top, uh, I think, 18 terpenes that were selected by people who were prescribed cannabis for pain relief, uh, one capacity or another, uh, we took those 18 terpenes and at those same exact ratios, as close as we can get it, and that's what we add into our relief skews. And uh, same thing, people taking for anxiety turn into our calm skews. Uh, people that said they were taking it for mood or cognitive function or sleep, uh, respectively turn into these different products. Um, and they, they, uh, really smell great. Um, you actually kind of look at like a, a cannabis aroma to them. Um, and it's a way we were able to sort of mimic the full uh, spectrum profiles of real marijuana strains that people are using for real conditions. Uh, and these people are blindly gravitated to them. Um, so this is really a very science and data driven approach to formulations. Uh, another thing Care by Design believes in is the ratio of Um, so every single one of the products that Carabin Design makes, you know, whether it be gummies or pain cream or droppers, vapes, you know, they'll have two numbers on them. They'll have uh, the amount of CBD and the amount of THC. So, uh, so what that means is, you know, a one-to-one -one will have equal amounts of THC and CBD. So for every milligram of THC, you have one milligram of CBD or THC. Um, whereas in 18 to one, for every one milligram of THC you have, you have 18 milligrams of CBD. Uh, so we, this, has a lot of different advantages in my view. Um, well, first of all, as we talked about before, CBD has been shown to alleviate a lot of the negative effects that are induced by THC. Um, so there is some true synergy there and some really interesting interplay. Um, I, I really believe that uh, THC and CBD work best together and you should try to find products that have some of each. Um, when I go to a dispensary and look for flour, I'm actually, everyone else shopping for the highest THC potency they can find. I potency and have sort of equal amounts uh, of these two compounds, which are getting harder and harder to find. So the market keeps driving it toward these high, high THC chemo bars. And, you know, maybe you'll get more stoned, but you might not enjoy the experience as much. Uh, so I personally recommend this sort of we call it type two cannabis that has roughly equal amounts of THC and CBD. Um, the ratio approach also allows you to tailor uh, what product you want to take to your own THC sensitivity your own tolerance and your own openness to experiencing intoxicating effects. Um, and every person with cannabinoid pharmacology, it just is so different. You know, 10 milligrams for one person is completely different than 10 milligrams to another person. You know, I, I could take 40 milligrams of THC and be relatively functional. My wife will have a panic attack if she takes five milligrams. Like everyone's just very different. I mean, tolerance is part of it, but it's also that we inherently have a lot of differences in the way we metabolize it. Um, and the way our body processes and experiences cannabis. 
So I love that the ratio approach allows you to personalize and customize uh, the, the ratio of TC and CBD to whatever works for you. You can, it gives you another way that you can figure out what dose and product works. Uh, so if you find that, oh, that two to one, I don't like how that made me feel, um, you can switch over to the four to one, maybe, or the eight to one, and alleviate some of those effects and just find that ratio that works for you. Uh, it also lets you select the, the right formulation uh, for what you're doing. Uh, for instance, I wouldn't take a one-to-one -one and go to work or you know something like that because I don't want to feel high at work. Um, uh, in 18 to one, I, I do take before work and uh, I really, I, I enjoy it, um, but it does not make me feel stoned or anything like that. Uh, but you know, before bedtime, that's when I might want a one-to-one -one, where I'm open to having those psychoactive effects. Uh, so you can tailor your experience to what, pro what uh, activity you're actually doing. Uh, and now CBD dosing. Um, so like I said, everyone's is so different. Um, so I really recommend just finding your own dose that works. Um, most clinical studies uh, are using CBD isolate and generally pretty high doses uh, with a single dose. So, you know, just because a study used 300 milligrams of CBD doesn't necessarily mean you need to have that same dose to achieve an effect you're looking for, uh, particularly when you're using like a full uh, spectrum product. Uh, because, um, you know, the way a, a single CBD, you know, isolate compound works, it's going to be different than when you have all these different cannabinoids from the plant, all the different terpenes, all that. Um, so, and now some CBD effects actually appear to be sort of more is better, whereas others almost have like a sweet spot. Uh, so like inflammation, you generally, the more CBD you take, the, the greater the anti-inflammatory effect. Uh, but that's not true for things like anxiety. Um, so uh, anti-anxiety effects of CBD has actually been shown to have a sweet spot, whereas if you go too low or too high, it reduces the efficacy. So for instance, in these studies, people that took you know, 50 milligrams of CBD, 300 milligrams, and 900, um, the, the 900 milligram group actually had the most anxiety. Um, but, but the 300 work fantastically at reducing anxiety. So that we call that a bell-shaped dose uh, response curve in pharmacology uh, because it sort of, it works best at a certain point. And then if you take too much, it kind of mellows back out. Uh, and that point might be different for everyone. So my recommendation is to do some homework, find the dose that works for you personally. Um, so choose a starting ratio based on your sensitivity to THC. If you don't want to feel any, any effects at all, Choose a 40 to one or the 18 to one. Like you're probably not, you're, the 40 to one, there's no way you're gonna feel anything uh, that's induced by THC. This is a very, very tiny amount. Um, whereas if you are you know, open to it, but you don't wanna go overboard, maybe the four to one or eight to one. Uh, but if you're you know, a veteran who's you know, actually looking for the psychoactive effects, you go this more strong like one to one type product. Um, and then, you know, start slow, but increase your dose each day until you find the effect you were looking for. Um, so, you know, you might take a half a serving or one serving the first day. If you didn't really think the CBD did much for you, maybe take uh, one and a half or two servings the next day. And you can kind of increase uh, until you find what you're looking for. Um, and same thing with the ratios. If you find that the 18 to 1 isn't doing much for you, maybe try the 8 to 1. Uh, and it actually might work better for you. You, everyone's just so different. You have to figure out what works for you. Um, just if you want a, a new number, I think 20 milligrams is a good starting point and to kind of go up from there. Uh, 20 milligrams is extremely safe, a pretty conservative dose. Um, and I, I think it's a really good starting point. Um, so there are considerations in choosing your CBD. Uh, and this is kind of recapping a lot of stuff we talked about. Uh, was your CBD isolate or broad spectrum or full spectrum? Um, uh, so I talked about how those might have different effects. Um, is the CBD hemp derived or marijuana derived? Uh, the CBD by itself is the same as hemp or marijuana. Uh, it's mostly gonna come down to how much THC is there, what terpenes are there. Um, but I will have the caveat that if you choose a hemp derived CBD, just make sure it comes with a, a certificate of analysis because there's a lot of bad players in the CBD market right now. Uh, there are people selling, you know, things like hemp seed oil as CBD, where it actually contains no CBD at all. Um, and the, the, you know, 
there's a lot of regulatory catch up we have to do. A lot of these bad players are kind of aren't being called out right now and they're continuing to, to operate on the market. Uh, so just be careful what you're getting. Um, it just uh, any reputable vendor doing it, um, care by design hemp. Uh, you can go to their website, put in your batch number, and I'll, I'll show a lab report from an independent third-party laboratory that verified our right, product has no pesticides, it has uh, the advertised amount of CBD, no heavy metals, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you don't know what a COA is, uh, check out our website, Care by Design Hemp. I wrote a blog post about how to read COAs. Uh, so considerations, of course, are the CBD THC ratio and the dose of C CBD. Uh, the root of administration is also a big one uh, because you know, 20 milligrams of CBD orally is not the same as 20 milligrams in a vape. It's not the same as 20 milligrams in a topical. Um, so you should really tailor um, each sort of root of administration uh, in its own right. And also consider other ingredients in the product. Uh, all kinds of stuff could be in a product. Uh, some vapes are, are diluted with uh, things to kind of thin it out and increase profits. Um, like our vapes are 100% cannabis oil, and that's really what you want to look for. Uh, the only thing in our vape is cannabinoid beans from the cannabis plant. Uh, you don't want people that are using like peg lipids or MCT diluting out their the vape. Um, it's less than ideal, at least. Um, and of course, maybe you don't want high sugar, you know, or you're a vegetarian. Like, so if we try to kind of make product to meet everyone's needs. Uh, we'll make we make our vape. Our gummies vegan, actually. We had to switch to formulation because there was a demand for it. Um, so just, you know, the other ingredients come into play, too. Uh, and that's really the end of the talk. Uh, thank you for inviting me to talk to you. And I'm happy to take questions and chat with any of you. Great. Thank you so much for sharing that information. It was really interesting. It was really helpful. And I thought that you really made it easy to understand. So I really appreciate that. And me, myself being in the industry for a long time, you actually taught me a couple things I didn't know. So I thought that was very great. Uh, we have a couple questions that we'll present and then anybody else that has questions, you can definitely email the doctor. Um, so somebody's asking, due to pharmaceutical industry's desire to use single entities, do you think that they'll ever embrace things like ratios and terpenes and pharmaceutical drugs? Um, interestingly, that's a good question. And uh, to an extent, yes, but not entirely. Um, you'll never see a pharmaceutical with, from a kind of whole plant approach. Um, in doing clinical research, you really need to be able to target um, what's happening, where the dangers lie. Um, you know, if you take a whole plant, you have literally thousands of different compounds in there. Um, one of those compounds maybe interact with some drug or who knows. So generally, uh, clinicians really prefer single molecule entities. However, the ratio approach actually is being embraced. Um, so it's not approved in the US right now, but it is approved in Europe is a, a product called Sativex. Uh, Sativex is roughly a one-to-one -one ratio of THC to CBD. Uh, it's used to uh, treat things like uh, chemotherapy and do, uh, induce pain, nausea. Um, and so that is the reason they formulated. Um, they embrace that ratio. They realized that, hey, the THC and CBD actually do seem to be beneficial together. So there actually is an approved drug now that it braces the ratio and does use TC and CBD. Great, that's really interesting. <laughs> um, we have another question here. Does winterization include a solvent? Maybe you could talk just a tiny bit about how that process happens. Yeah, so uh, winterization generally, uh, you take that crude extract, uh, you mix it with ethanol, and then you put it in a really cold freezer for a couple of days. Uh, now, what the, the cold freezer does is it makes all the heavy waxes clump together so that you can filter out all, all the other stuff. So all the stuff we're looking for are not very large, clumpy type of molecules. They're, they're small lipids. So at that cold temperature, they will stay in a liquid form, uh, whereas the waxes clump together into a solid and we can filter out all the cannabinoids and terpenes away from those waxes. Uh, so yes, there is a solvent evolved because you do mix it with ethanol. Uh, however, you need to remove the ethanol from the product after winterization. Uh, use a, something called a rotovap, which will uh, basically evaporate off all the ethanol and leave behind just the, the oil from the cannabis plant. Right. And then the test that the state requires also make sure that there's no residual solvents in the products. Yeah. So, yeah, so people can be guaranteed that the products, that all that's been taken out. Exactly. That's why I was specific to hemp when I said the COAs, because anything you buy in California, 
uh, everyone has to go through the same very high level of testing to release a product. Um, anything you find in a dispensary is already proven to not have any residual solvents. Um, so you really know you could be safe. Yeah. We have another question here. Um, somebody that's been taking 18 to one. Um, it's been working really good for their fatigue. They're thinking about starting the 40 to one. Um, but she wants to know if she should be worried about a buildup of serotonin in her system if she's, I guess, been using uh, CBD products for over a year. Mm, CBD products should not affect your level of serotonin. Uh, I've never seen that reported and uh, I would be very So that would not be a concern, in my opinion. Okay. Um, also, are you finding that more doctors are becoming more informed um, on cannabis? Yes, more. Um, maybe not enough, though. Um, uh, to their credit, like cannabis or the endocannabinoid system is not something they learned in med school. Uh, it was it only got started being introduced to med school programs in the past like couple of years, actually. Um, so a lot of doctors they might not even know as much as a lot of you about like how this stuff is working. Um, and yes, it's gaining a lot of acceptance or a lot of clinicians that are pushing for the use of cannabinoids in the clinic. Um, but a lot of them are very hesitant to do so, even though it's a very high safety profile to these drugs. Um, yeah. Compared to things like opioids, which are extremely dangerous. Um, so, you know, if you can use, you know, something shown to, to not cause overdoses, you know, even at any dose, TUC will not cause an overdose death. Right. Um, so if you can sort of prescribe QC instead of an opioid, that, that seems an amazing prospect. Yeah. Um, this is the last question, and we had a lot of questions coming in. So after you answer this, maybe you can um, just provide your email address to so anybody else that has more questions. But yeah, somebody's nice. asking, um, but what's the difference between taking a half dose of a one-to-one -one as opposed to taking a full dose of two-to-one? Uh, so let's see. So right. the, yeah, so let's say uh, a one-to-one, -one, let's just say it has, I forget the exact serving amount. But I think you're just taking less milligrams, but it's a different ratio. So it, you're not really, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing, right. So if you take one dose of a one-to-one, -one, let's say you have 20 milligrams of CBD plus 20 milligrams of THC. Uh, it's actually 10 because we were limited by serving to, uh, by the state to 10 milligrams of THC. So you have 10 milligrams CBD, 10 milligrams THC. Um, a half dose, of course, you get five milligrams THC and five milligrams CBD. Uh, now you take a, a full dose of one, uh, now you have 10 milligrams of CBD, but only five milligrams of THC. Uh, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Um, great. And then last question I always get is if people want to take 20 milligrams of CBD a day, is it better for them to take it all in the morning time at once? Or is it better for them and for their bioavailability for them to split that up? Like That's once in the morning at night. A question we might not have the answer to yet. Um, I generally think that taking it all at once, um, I don't want to say actually, it's really hard to say. Uh, we don't know yet. Um, it might be different per person. Uh, it might be different per what you're using it for. Um, you might need different amounts if you're trying to reduce anxiety or reduce inflammation, you know? So uh, there's a lot of caveats. And until we have more clinical research, it's really hard to make hard and fast statements for a lot of these types of things. Okay, so we'll have to stay tuned <laughs> for that. Um, and then can you provide your email address in case they want to get in touch with you personally? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, it's my first initial last name, so mlms at cannoncraft.com. And you, okay. you feel free to shoot questions. Okay. With the caveat, I'm not a clinician. I'm not able to answer a lot of uh, health questions. So uh, if you ask me if TG is going to cure your cancer, I'll probably say no, and don't try it, just listen to your doctor. Um, so uh, often I get these kind of very clinical types of questions and I really cannot answer them. So with that caveat in mind, you, you're all welcome to shoot me an email. Okay, great. So if they have questions about the format, format formulations or the science or anything that we talked about in the webinar, um, they can contact you. And again, that's mlms, E-L-M-E-S at canacraft.com. Um, and thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you to the audience. Thank you to Dr. Elms. And then thank you to the Canacraft crew who also helped to make this event possible. Um, this was a really interesting webinar. I myself learned something. So I know that all of you guys learned something. Um, and this has been another edition of the Pharmacy Cannabis Lecture Series. I hope that you learned something that helped make you better informed cannabis consumers and help you find relief. See you next episode. All right, thanks everyone.